So everybody says you need to spend a ton of money to get a good TV, but I'm going to try to challenge that with my review of this big boy right here. And by big boy, I mean like little, but it doesn't matter. This is the Samsung CU8000. Now I've got the 43 inch variation, but it does go all the way up to much bigger sizes. So that is something that you can appreciate. Now, the reason we are talking about this TV is because it's actually really good. So if you wanted to know whether you should buy it or not within 30 seconds, I'll tell you, yeah, it's a good TV. Definitely buy it if it's something that you're not too picky with now I'm going to talk about what I mean by that and in this video we're going to cover black levels color image glare how it performs with gaming consoles all that good stuff so if you get value out of this video make sure you subscribe and smack a like on this video and let's dive right into it now the price at the time of shooting this video is $377 which for 43 inch isn't really bad considering the picture quality that you're going to get out of here now, Samsung is kind of all over the place with their advertising. On Amazon, they'll say they have pure color. The television itself, it'll say something like crystal color. None of that nonsense really matters because either way, you do not have quantum dots. And yes, quantum dot will be the better option if you are a color guy that wants to see the most vibrant expression of color. However, if you want vivid color, but you don't really want to have to pay the QLED pricing, this is an excellent alternative. And the reason for that is because while not super saturated, it still gives you rich, lifelike color. That's something that you're going to really appreciate as you start watching more and more content. Now, Samsung says they have something like mega contrast in this particular television. And at first, I'm not going to lie, I kind of scoffed a little. But as I started to dial in the TV and see what it was capable of, I really did see some really impressive depth of field. Now this is because Samsung is trying to give you some sort of processing capabilities even out of their lowest end televisions, which is something we can really appreciate. I found no matter what demo I threw at it, it was able to handle it with the most beautiful of colors while still providing me with enough depth and immersion to make the content feel full and robust. That is not something that you are going to find on a lot of televisions nowadays and for this to be able to do it for this price point is just damn impressive. Motion is one of those things that I really enjoyed. It was very fluid, it was very clean, and I didn't find myself having to go back to the drawing board trying to dial in motion settings a ton. Whether you use motion processing or you don't, this TV generally gets it right most of the time, and I actually found it to be an enjoyable experience. Even though when you don't use motion processor, or processing, you still have judder and jitters, it's nowhere near as bad as you would have on, let's say, a 120 hertz TV, and you're rocking a 24 hurt signal like that's just not something that you're going to struggle with making movies a lot more enjoyable and more often than not this television really does just get it right with the motion and the kind of clarity that it does have when objects are in motion and if you want to use the motion processing options you don't have a ton of artifacts like you would on some other TVs which is a huge win in my book now if you're buying this TV for HDR just you can just end the video right here. This is not an HDR TV. This is not the kind of TV you buy for HDR. You are going to have to spend a little bit more money to see better HDR because even when you spend upwards of two grand, you will find TVs don't really do very well with HDR. A lot of the time it looks washed out. It looks off. There are just inconsistencies that just don't make sense. So trust me when I tell you, if you want HDR, this is not going to be your TV. Now, as far as what this TV is offering, I was actually pretty impressed because they were offering the solar remote that we find on the higher end models. We're finding that they have the same Samsung Game Hub and they've got their Air Slim design, which really back in the day used to be on TVs like the Samsung KS8000, which was much more of a flagship type model. It was like a junior flagship. But the fact that we're seeing this kind of slim, really attractive looking TV for like 377 bucks before tax is ridiculous because usually we, we'd have to struggle a lot to get to that point. And the ability to be able to just slide the feet right on without any tools required makes this really a convenient and easy TV to set up, which for me personally, I like. Now, I'm not a fan of how wide the TV stand is, but honestly, if you like ease of use, you probably won't find very many TVs as easy as this. And it really is an attractive TV despite not being the most premium. So even though there are plastics all around from a design perspective, they still did a good job of making sure that it's not an uggo of a TV, right? Like you're not looking at this thing like, oh my God, this is the worst TV, like snatch it out of my house, right? So that's the good thing about what they designed it with in mind and how they designed it. I won't lie to you, the internal speakers, while not banging at all, they're actually decent. 
they have really clear, and I mean really clear trebles, and pretty noticeable mids even, to the point where you can hear a little thump when there's some music playing, which was enjoyable. Now, bass, you can forget about, you're going to have to get a sound bar for that, but it does a decent enough job to where you will enjoy your experience. I don't know what Samsung's doing differently in terms of audio, but the clarity of the vocals, that was really a nice touch. And again, if you're listening to like cinematic movies and when those strings or orchestra scores start playing, you're going to really enjoy it on a set if you don't have a sound system. So it's not like in the old days where you would just have to get a sound system because this is the worst audio on planet Earth. It's actually okay for what it is. And I think that's something that is super rare to find these days. I think if you're somebody who is not super picky, right? You're not sitting there expecting an OLED on a budget. You're not expecting it to be the best TV that has ever been invented on a budget. This one's probably going to be like, wow, this is a nice TV because the color is super rich. You have a ton of beautiful black level control over all kinds of content. Really, it doesn't matter what it is. Upscaling is really good, so I was watching older media, and I'm not going to lie, one of the areas where this TV truly shines is anime content. So if you're an anime fan, I'm going to tell you right now, this TV is amazing for it because it isolates lines and texts really well to the point where you can see it and make out every little thing that you want to see, and that for me was huge when watching animated content. And it also provides a little bit more of a cinematic look to the anime, which again comes from not having the most oversaturated color or saturated color. That's the part that really does help it out a bit. Now you can always desaturate higher end TVs, but the point being, you don't have to do a whole lot of work to get this TV to a point where you're like, wow, I'm really enjoying this thing. And for me, that is huge because nobody wants to sit there all day having to work a lot to try to pull out what the TV is capable of, at least from a depth perspective. Now, for color, you are going to have to put work in. There's no way around it, no ifs, ands, or buts. I do have settings for $5 on this channel. Just join the membership, and that will take care of that for you. Now, if you don't want to go that route, calibrators run like 250 to like 500 bucks. so the alternative ain't great. You can try to dial it in, but you're not going to be able to see every little detail as a professional doing it for you. So just go ahead and throw the 5 bucks and see what your TV can do if you're interested in seeing what your TV has. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm really impressed with the transformations. It's like day and night. Now, on the other side of this is for gamers. I know a lot of people wonder, okay, but like, how is it for gaming? I don't have HDMI 2.1. I don't have VRR. So, like, what's the point? Well, if you're not somebody, again, that's picky and you just want a nice TV, this is a nice TV because while it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, it is still giving you a beautiful image. You are still able to experience nice responsive input lag. Motion is really clean. And it's generally a nice feeling. The only thing you're really sacrificing, again, are the higher refresh rates. And honestly speaking, most games now are coming out still at 30 FPS on the open world games. And performance mode is at 60 FPS most of the time. When you go up to 120, you're basically still stuck with the lowest textures, the lowest resolution possible to push that higher performance. So it's a trade-off either way. And honestly, you're still getting a good picture and you're saving some money, which has to mean something to you if you're looking at this particular model. So just keep that in mind. But all in all, all the things that I've seen on this TV, it's just truly impressive to the point where I have to say, yeah, it's definitely a budget TV I would recommend. 